So to get started, uh, you want to grab your balls of clay. You want to grab um, a piece of paper towel or even a newspaper if you don't have paper towel. And then a smaller bowl in your household. You know, it's like a, a good cereal bowl, but it's not as big as a salad bowl. So you're going to grab your clay. And it might be in a square or a block. And what you're going to do is just going to smack it until it's kind of a round ball. And you can also smooth it, whichever is easier. So this is what we're working with. It's kind of a ball form. It's not perfect. We don't need it to be. So we're going to do basically a really large pinch pot. Um, so we want to just set the ball down and start digging a hole in the center. It kind of looks like this. And we want to squeeze with your palm against the outside and rotate this around. We we'll basically just keep doing that. So you're going to end up using your whole hand to make this. Keep rotating. Make sure you're scooping up the inside. To make this bowl, we want the bottom to be just as thick as the top. So you want to make sure that the bottom doesn't stay too thick. I'm just using the table to support it. So this is kind of where we're at right now. You're going to keep working on this and you want it to be about a quarter of an inch thick. It's going to take some time to get it to be this big. I also recommend you can kind of put it, put your hand inside of it and hit it with your fist to make sure that your bottom um, thins out. Basically do whatever you can to kind of make it bow out. Check your bottom as well, make sure it's the same thickness, and if you need to, you can scoop some clay out with your fingers. Okay, so we're almost at the point where we're gonna let it sit and set up, but what we should do is we should smooth everything. As you can see, there's lots of fingerprints and dents. So just with your finger, if you have a sponge, you can definitely use a sponge. Just go through the whole thing and take five minutes or so just to smooth it. That way it'll actually make the next step easier. So we're going to take a break and let this set up once we're done with this step. And if it's nice and smooth while it's soft, it's easier to manage than once it's hardened and you're trying to smooth it out. All right, so this is what it looks like. A little bit smoother. It's not perfect, obviously, but there aren't huge divots in it. And I'm not going to touch the outside. So next we're going to take our bowl and we're going to look at how big our sample is. Obviously this one's a lot bigger than this little guy. So I'm just going to cut it down using a knife of any kind. I'm just going to trim. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just taking off maybe the top inch. You might not even have to do this. You might have chosen a bowl that's actually bigger than your clay. We'll just set this aside. Next we're going to take our paper towel. We're going to sit it into here. Pop our bowl on here and flip it upside down. Perfect. So we're just going to use some compression, smack it a little bit, and this will lengthen your clay so it fits around your form. It'll also help compress it. And it'll help smooth everything. So we're going to take a sponge. And that's just going to help smooth out the piece and compress it. You can use your hands, but I think the sponge gives you more surface area. You can see my sponge is hardly wet. I can't wring any water out of it. If you get your clay too wet, it'll cause quite a nightmare. So make sure you're not adding water to this. And I'm exchanging, swapping back between my hands and the sponge. As you can see though, we're getting closer to a nice smooth bowl form. Okay, so now that we're done, we're gonna let this set up. Now I'd recommend 
walking away for about an hour up to two hours. I wouldn't go past two hours. So if you want, watch a movie, watch a TV show, have some snacks, take a break. So we're going to reassess in a little bit and I'll see you then. All right. So we are coming back to this bowl after a few hours or in my case, a few days. So what we're first going to do is we're just going to pull it right up off of our form and set it down. We can take the paper towel off. So what we want to do is we want to smooth all these little creases on the inside, anywhere where you can see cracks. We basically want to get rid of all the cracks because they can crack more in the kiln. So just with your finger, nice and gently, go around the form. So when you're done doing that, you can take your finger or a tool of any kind, even like a kitchen butter knife. I'm going to use this tool. And we can just level off the top. You might have some, some cracks on the top or might be uneven. So you want to just very, very carefully, you can see I'm only taking just some little pieces off. And if it's too thick on one side, like you can see this is thinner right here than over here. You can do the same thing with this tool and just very gently shave around the outside or even shave around the inside, whatever starts to make it look even. So you want to go around your whole bowl and do that. All right, great. So once it's pretty even, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is handmade and this is kind of part of the experience. You can either leave your bowl this way or if you want to do our little heart themed because of the season, you want to very gently and slowly start to press and you can make it as subtle or as extreme as you'd like. At the bottom you're going to cup your hands together like this. You can pinch, adjust it just how you want, but make sure you do it nice and subtly. That way you don't get any cracking. If you do it too extreme and too quickly, your piece could crack. So now that we're at the final stages, before we start painting, I'm going to grab a sponge. You want to make sure it's, again, hardly, hardly wet. And you're just going to run it across the top. Maybe use your finger if you have some more divots. And so you're just smoothing this out so that the space that you can glaze, nice and smooth. You can do it on the inside, too, if you feel like you have any blemishes. Take your time with this. The smoother and harder you work, obviously the nicer it's going to look. So don't feel like you're in a rush. Okay, so as we get ready to glaze, I want you to very carefully flip your pot over. And using a pen or pencil or any carving tool, I want you to put your initials on the bottom. That way we can figure out who is whose at the end. Pick up. Perfect. So this is my bowl. So you can either paint it immediately or you can set it aside again. You can paint this at any stage, so you could almost let it entirely dry and you can paint it as well. But if you're cruising right along, we can start painting. Now, what we recommend of the glazes we gave you, we have instructions on how to mix the paint to what colors you'd like. Imagine that any color that you mix is going to end up brighter when it's done. We also recommend two to three coats of the glaze. Basically, if you can see your brush strokes, you'll be able to see your brush strokes when it's fired. So keep that in mind. So we're really excited to see what you make. If you have any questions throughout this process, please connect to us uh, via the email or the phone number provided in your pickup box. When you're ready to have it fired, you want to just get a hold of us and you can drop it off at a time that's convenient to you. The most important aspect of this project, though, is that you want to make sure that this clay never freezes before it gets to us. Just because of the winter months, we just want to be extra careful because it can cause some flaws in the firing process. All right, happy making!